Welcome, welcome back. This is the BQE live at PNC. Live audience experience. Audience, give it up. Alive in here. So I have a special guest tonight, uh, my man Side on your side. What up? What's up? Hey, yo, yo, I, I, I appreciate you uh, coming through. I, I know we said it was a radio interview. Yeah, I didn't expect all of this. All, all of all this, of but they're they here for you. They, for you. This is New York, and they appreciate real I New York. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I mean, I'm all for it, but I thought we were going to do like a regular. Exactly. We're we going to make it as much of a regular interview as we can. Oh, so, so, but, but off the top, I want to say, if you guys don't know, since we have an audience, if you don't know, Saigon, new album just dropped November 6th, I think. Uh, yeah. The Greatest Story Never Told, Part 2. Yeah. Brand Circus. So if you don't have it, if you do have it, clap it up. Clap it up regardless, because this makes good impact. Yeah. If, if you don't have it, buy it. If you don't have it, download it. If, if, if you don't have it and you think you want it, borrow it from somebody and then go and buy it and copy Even if you don't buy it, even if you steal it, you just need to have it because it's, it's good. <laughs> if, they, if they steal it, they should tweet about it. Yeah, that's you need it. To that's something. Like, yeah, exactly. You need to get something out of it. Spread right? the word. Exactly, exactly. So, I, I, know, I know you explained the, the, the album title. But I, I, I thought it was a good answer, and I, you know, for people who don't know, I want to explain it. So the greatest story never told was his first, your first, your debut album. All they, you yeah. had a couple projects. Great story never told to uh, Bread and Circus, and yeah. and, and I know you said it uh, has to do with Rome, a uh, Roman ideology. Yeah. Can you can you explain that again for people who don't it know? It was just something that you know when when Rome was in power, like America, they had they had an ideology how to pretty much control the public, the populace, so the people. And it was, you know, it was simple. It was give them cheap food and entertainment, bread and circuses, and it pretty much caused public diversion because nobody pays attention to what's really going on in politics and government and all that when everybody's full and happy. And distracted. <laughs> so it distracted. Yeah. So you keep people's stomachs full, you keep them at a sporting event or at a coliseum or at a forum or whatever, and you know, why, why you do your real dirty work because, right. you know, everybody's entertained. Right, right. We're gonna, we gonna get that. We, you talked about some of that strategy oh, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. you've been using. But I, so with this project, what I asked you earlier before we started, if you still write, you said you still write. Yeah. Um, and I, I know you put a lot of thought into your uh, your work. Yeah. When, when you did, when you decided to do Great Story Number Two, uh -huh. and then added the the, the Burn Service, what, what was just your process of putting the album together? How how much did you think about it before you started cutting records? Before you started writing? Um, it, it's like I'm on I'm on a mission. I, I when I started doing music, when I decided that I wanted to get into the music business, I didn't even realize there was so much business involved at the time. Like man, it started it started when I really decided that I wanted to be a, I wanted to be an artist and you know you know and, and make music to put to put out there to the public. You know, I decided that I wanted to be an artist that was responsible because when I grew up listening to hip hop. We had responsible hip hop music. I mean, it was a lot, it was it was fun music. Right. But then you can go and listen to a KRS One, who was the teacher. Right. You can go listen to you know Public Enemy, who was telling you about Fight the Power. You can go listen to Ed O G. If you from from up up, up in the Bean, he had songs like Be a Father, Be a Child. Right. Right. And these kinds of songs was impactful and dope. And uh, and dope, right? right? Still dope. They were impactful in a positive way. So. I'm cut from that thing. So when I look at hip hop now, and the hip hop that I'm in right now, I'm like, what happened to all of the hip hop that matters? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, the, the, I want to ask you, you have some interesting collaborations. Obviously, Just Blaze is a part of the project. Yeah. Executive produced it. Yeah. Um, you have features with Styles P, mm -hmm. Lecrae, Sickman, Millionaire. Um, the Lecrae collaboration, yeah. best thing that I found. Yeah. Um, how did that come about? He, he's an interesting figure. He's a he right. formal Christian rapper, and yeah. now he he still has his message, but he's opening up uh, some of the rock records that he does to kind of spread his message to a greater audience. Lecrae's a trailblazer, man. He's somebody who, um, you know, when everybody else is thinking like, you know, it's cool to do one thing, and, and he grew up in church, so he's sticking to his guns, you know what I'm saying? He, 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 he has a company called Unashamed, and he's unashamed of who he is as a person. Right. So he's like, if I'm gonna do music, I'm gonna do it my way. You know, I'm a rapper about the Lord. I love God. I wake up and thank God, I praise God every day. So I'm gonna put it in my music. I don't care who looks at me and clowns me because I'm sure he went through being ridiculed, which is something stupid. He's rapping about God, but dudes are coming to be like, ah, oh, that's corny, man. That's that Christian rap. But you know, he stuck to it, and, and you know, he grew and grew and grew as an 
artist, so you know, somebody put me on to his music, and, I, and I'm like, this kid's talented. Like, he's sick, yeah. He's been, yeah, he's real talented. So, you know, um, we just we started talking on Twitter, and then we exchanged numbers. And he was like, I'm a fan. I'm like, you know, so we started to talk. And I don't think we even would have worked had we not had that conversation. Right. We just talked about life. It wasn't, even, it wasn't even about music. And, you know, and I dug him as a person. I dug his soul, his spirit. He had a pure, clean spirit. Right. And I wanted to work with him. And we, we made an excellent, great, great record. And if you haven't heard it, it's called Best Thing That I Buy It. Download it. Download it. Download if you steal it, tweet about it. That's the record care with money. Yeah. What, well, um... So when we talked about was it was it just strictly the bill and then right? Yeah, it was the bill. I mean, it wasn't even we was in a, you know, it was just a you know, I see a brother doing good things, doing right. something positive and I put in, you know, something innovative as right. well. And you know, so I gave it a shot and we ended up going to see it. Right, right, right. We had a record with a sick man, uh, Blown Away Part Two. Yeah. Um I, I don't know if this line is is, is this line from that record? I, I like this line you said, uh, fuck a GED, um, people need DPCs. That's not from that record, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, but I said I didn't know. I said I didn't know. That's not from that record, but, um, I mean, that's just a slick line. She's trying to say, sometimes us as a people, black people in, in particular, we, 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 we focus on a lot of the wrong things, and, you know, and, and it's, you know, we've been diverted to that. You know, we, a lot of things that we think are important are so unimportant. Right. And when you see it, when you see the youth, the next generation, one thing that people don't feel, feel to realize, even a lot of artists, and I get a lot of flack for talking about a lot of artists, but I'm saying something real. I'm like, you a man before you're an artist. And right. being a man comes with being responsible. And you have a responsibility to the next generation as an adult, whether you want to or not. You don't want to have that responsibility, stay in your house. Right, right. Don't come outside. Because somebody, some child somewhere is looking up to you and, and following you and emulating everything you do. You see what I'm saying? So when you're an artist now, not only you, now you got the whole world looking at you. Paying attention to you. Yeah, paying yeah. attention to you. So what are you giving these, what are you giving them? I mean, I mean that's part of the reason why I asked the DP thing, because they, they, they were, to me, you know, the last set of brothers on that level or who are on a major label. Yeah. And, and, and now, you know, we, we're talking about, um, being on an independent label earlier and mm -hmm. size on an independent label and you know it's, it's, it's you you nothing stops you creatively you, you have a good album if you don't have it go pick it up um, but we made a joke that you know it comes and then it seems to go away just as fast because they, you know you don't have finances first of all that I mean, indie is not going to spend like a major you see what i'm saying so that that right there changes the game once for one Number two, they don't have the same resources that a major label has. Right. So they you get treated I've been on I was on Atlantic Records for six years right. and I never put out an album, but just because I was on Atlantic Records, I had more leeway up at radio, right. up at going up to MTV, going up to anywhere. But even without an album, they just go, Oh, he's on Atlantic, so Yeah, come through, come through. Wow, you. Now you tell oh, I'm on Johnny Numb Nuts Records. So you're like, oh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Week, Luckily for me, I'm a I've got an established name, so right. I, I still get love. Right. But a lot of artists, new artists, is indie, you're not going to get the same right. opportunities. But, but even through a name, there's a degree of imbalance you have to go through, right? Like with this I mean, project. I mean, yeah. Like of radio, so, I mean, you don't get radio in New York, but it's tough getting radio in New York. getting radio in New York because New York, we don't have an identity anymore. Right. We, we lost our identity. It's a transition. So like this part, we have to if you turn on New York radio, you would think you was in a downtown. Right. Yeah, absolutely. But that's a whole. We can make that a whole episode. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. What? Um, what's your favorite record on the album? On the, um, blown away. Yeah. Blown away. What? Um, what's the man? What, what do you think about earlier the uh, in the summertime? The sick man, controversy with Nas and Ghost Rider. As a lyricist, um, I, I, I know it wasn't true because I'm friends with both of them. And, and you know, when, when you're in the studio, artists bounce ideas around. Right. You see what I'm saying? They try to make it seem like a man went in there and wrote a whole rap. Like, you know, Aaron, yeah. I'll nah, say this. Like, right. nobody in the world can write for nice, right. first of all. Second right. of all, second of all, you know, Stick is a genius as well, his own right. So they bounce ideas around. Right. Like, if you're going to blame them, you got to blame, you know, all of these guys, because they all got their little camps and they all go in the studio together. And, and they create, and they create. What do you think, as a music do, I know you're hip hop, but just as a music in general, and what are your thoughts about like if if like you know this is the same he could write a song for her she sings it it's a hit and we're like man she sounds good I love this song 
and you know, hip hop obviously doesn't work that way if you're not writing your own shit. Man, because you know, rap, hip hop is, I don't know, man, it's a free form. It's a free form. It's like there's a, a art to mediocrity, it's a skill <laughs> of being mediocre now in hip hop. Right. Like dudes are going there and be like, what's the simplest thing I can think of? Or what's the catchiest, something catchy that somebody could just keep repeating over and over again? Right. And that's kind of like going backwards. That's like a college kid going to kindergarten. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it kind of don't make sense. And, and, and that's where we at. And right now in hip hop, it's like, okay, I remember growing up, I used to have to write down the lyrics to certain songs. And it's good that Rap Genius is here because- Rap Genius is in the house? I, I used to do that. I used to go down to hear a song and I would, to memorize it, I would faster, I would write it down. Right. And not only was I learning like spelling, because there's certain words I have to go look up, but I'm, I'm, I'm enhancing my vocabulary at the same time. Right. You see what I'm saying? We talked about it earlier, you, you know, you, you, and it's funny, you know, I, I work in media and sometimes I don't like when I ask you a question, you say a particular type of answer, people latch on to the first half of it, yeah. the second half is lost. You know, recently you made some comments about people you want to knuckle up with, and you mentioned yeah. Ross and Two Chains, but the the and, and, and it was the, the second half of your answer was your point. People paid attention. No, to the, the whole first half. the whole interview was my point. I just said I said that at the tail end of the interview right. because I know had I not said a name, then nobody's going to like hey, to a point. Exactly. Which was it, you know parts of it was just want more balance in hip hop. Parts of it you consider yourself progressive hip hop. If you feel like you have to search for it, you said. Now I said I, I said I, I feel like it's sad that you have to search for progressive hip hop or anything that you have to search high and low for. It. I think that's that's backwards. You know, life is not a big party. But if you look at hip hop, hip hop does not reflect the society anymore. Right. You, you guys are talking about Lamborghinis and. And, and flying cars and all of that when we're in the worst economic times in modern history. Right. Guys are talking about $300,000 necklaces and, and $500,000 watches when dudes can't even get jobs in, in, in real life. You see what I'm saying? So it's become like a cartoon almost. Do you think, because uh, like we mentioned Chris, Christian Hip Hop earlier, right? Huh? And, and I think a lot of times when people thought of Christian Hip Hop, they just thought it was whack. Lecrae happens to be dope. And you know, with, 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 if we're gonna call it conscious hip hop or progressive hip hop or hip hop with a message, Public Enemy was obviously dope. Dead Press was obviously dope. But do you think there's a, a, a lack of people who want to present those messages, but they just don't have the skill to make it is, good? It's not even that. It's the record company. That message is not beneficial to their plight. Right. Mm. They have a plight, and the plight is to keep our children ignorant and stupid. They don't want us to grow up and compete for jobs with them. They don't want that. So they go give them, they got this thing called urban radio. Mm -hmm. Urban radio means this junk goes to the black and brown community. In abundance. Yeah, in abundance. They don't go on rhythmic radio. God forbid your record gets so big that it, they call it crossing over, right. and it crosses over. Then it's making so much money that nobody cares. But that's going straight to urban. And urban is built for the black and brown community. So when you hear certain records with certain content in it, mm -hmm. big booty hoes and shake your ass and suck my dick in the morning, part my language, that's going to us. Right. You see what I'm saying? But no, never any songs no, do you hear that black side. women are number one right. with the new cases of HIV and AIDS. Nobody talks about that. But everything is over sexual. Right. And nobody talks about safe sex, but they right. just talk about, yeah, fuck twerk, twerk, fuck that bitch, fuck that bitch. And it's, 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 it's real shit. Like, yeah. real. Right. And, and if they do, it, it tends to be an indie artist. Like yeah. Said, like exactly. you said earlier, like you that new shit. You say something you say something, that shit is you say something that's anything against uplifting, they're going to find a way to shut your ass up. Right, right, right. And right. it's not by mistake. It's not by, this shit is by design. Right. That shit is factual. Right, right. But if you want to get that good shit, pick up Saigon's album. This is the BQE on PNC Radio. We're going to take a two song break. What's up? You want to hear anything? Um, play something. You got the album here? Play something. Since you're talking about the Lecrae. Since you're talking about the Lecrae. Play something aggressive. Play something with Lecrae. Oh, oh my. 90%. I mean, don't go back. <laughs> <laughs> what up? The BQE Radio live from PNC, Dumbo, Brooklyn. Can the crowd, can you give it up? I see. I see. I see. I see. I see. 